Good evening, everybody. Everybody have a good afternoon. Amen. <laughs> it's a uh, it's an uh, honor to have Mr. and Mrs. John Hildebrand with us this evening. Congratulations. Um, we have much to pray about. Let's let's remember our church as a whole. Uh, all the sickness in our church, uh, our shut-ins, Miss Mary and her cancer. Uh, Miss Trina, it was good to have her with us this morning. Uh, Miss Letty, uh, Miss Anna, Miss Jasmine. Is Miss Anna getting to come home this week? Does anybody know? Remember Miss Anna. Uh, let's remember our nation. Our nation needs Jesus and the leaders of our nation. Uh, I always remember the sick, those on the prayer list and the prayer requests made in our church. And pray for Preacher Little John this evening as well. Does anybody have any requests they'd like to make known to share? Amen. Remember these? Anybody else? Remember Preacher Robert as well. Praise the Anybody else? Anybody have an unspoken request this evening? Amen. Let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Thank you, Sister Faith. Anybody else? Brother Jerry, you lead us to the Lord in prayer. Page 212. That's new usher. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Let's uh, pray over the offer. Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you this evening again. One more time, Lord, just thanking you for the day that you've given us, Lord, the opportunity to be in your house and call upon your name, Lord. Lord, we just pray that you would just be with us in the midst tonight. God, touch the preaching tonight. Anoint the preacher, Lord, touch the singing and the musicians as well, Lord. We just pray that you would be in the midst. 
And Lord, take this offering we're about to receive. Use it for the building of thy kingdom. Bless those who can give and those who can't. And Lord, we love you and we'll give you all the honor and the glory. It's in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, that we do humbly pray. Amen.
I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus then houses or oh land, I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hands than to be a king of vast domain. Oh, Y'all don't know I've been through a lot of stress this week, so I'm, I'm trying my best. Um. Now and then, an old friend of mine I've not seen for some time. Well, this I've got.
Somebody in the church wants to take off, that'd be all right, eh, man? Uh, I'm going to be in Joshua chapter of number 24 tonight. Joshua 24. <laughs> I was talking to Brother David earlier, and I told him, I said, you know, the Lord, I had a message or two on my heart, and God laid something else on my heart. I believe it was during Sunday school just before. So I was like, well, maybe that's going to be it. He gave me the title of a message to some scripture I already had thought about. And going down the road, the Lord decided to change it again. <laughs> so I got the title of my sermon and I got the scripture. Anything else you get is going to be straight from the Lord tonight. I'm going to get it at the same time you are, all right? Amen. I want to preach on the title tonight, I Choose You. Hey, Amen. I choose you. Preacher, who do you choose? I choose the Lord. Amen. Amen. Joshua 24, verse 15, one verse of Scripture tonight. The Bible said, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. I like the end of that verse. It says, As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Why? Because He's done everything in my house. Amen. He provided the bills when the bills come due. Uh, he provided the help when we got sick. Amen. Uh, he provided the job I got to make the bills come due. Uh, oh, my God provided everything. So as for me and my house, I'm going to keep on going for Jesus. Amen. Preacher, pray for us this evening. Yes, Father God, come down, Lord, and I touch us. God, help us, Lord, Father God. We can't do it without you, Lord. 
Oh, please, God, touch us. Give us, Lord, Father, what you have us to have. Please, God. Oh, please, Lord. Amen. Now, I was studying in the scriptures the other day, and I can't remember the exact verse of scripture it was, uh, but as I got to studying in the scripture, the Lord said, uh, do not say that you are tempted of God, uh, because God cannot be a tempter of evil, amen. Uh, God is no tempter of evil, amen. Uh, God will do like he did with you, do, do to you, I'm sorry, like he did with Job. Uh, Satan come by God's way and said, uh, Lord asked Satan, he already knew where he'd been, but he said, Satan, where have you been? And um, Satan told the Lord, he said, God, I've been out walking the earth to and fro. He said, as a roaring lion, I've been out seeking whom I can devour, amen. Also, Job, he, uh, uh, he was sitting there, and he, was, he didn't do nothing wrong to God. He hadn't, he hadn't failed God in no way. The Lord said Job was a perfect and an upright man in God's eyes. Uh, oh, but the Lord looked at Satan and said, what, Have you considered my servant Job? Uh, that he's a perfect uh, and an upright man. You see, God, he won't be the one to tempt you. Uh, but every once in a while, he wants to see uh, what you're made of. Uh, and when Satan comes back to him. Uh, Satan, where you been? I've been out uh, walking the earth to and fro uh, seeking if I can get somebody else uh, that claims to be a child of God. Uh, and every once in a while uh, God will say, have you considered uh, my servant David? Uh, every once in a while I'll say, have you considered uh, my servant Jerry? Uh, amen. I got to thinking, amen. Uh, as a child of God, uh, amen, we all the time see us. Uh, we get where, we, where we're comfortable with God. Uh, we don't want to move from where we're at, but because we're on a spiritual high, and when we're on that spiritual high, when you get to the top of Mount Everest, amen, you feel accomplished because you've reached somewhere. Not everybody can reach, amen, and they don't want to come down off of the accomplishment they got, amen, but sometimes we have to leave that mountaintop, and we got to get back down in the gutter, so we can tell the people that's down there in that gutter, look where I come from. Look where I'm going. Look how my life changed because of this man the name Jesus. And then every once in a while when God shows up in our life and then he'll look at Satan and he'll say, have you considered my servant? And in those times when Satan comes by he might take something from you that's so dear whether it's a child, whether it's your health, or your health I'm sorry, whether it's your Job, whether it's a car, sometimes it might even be something so simple as a pet you have that you love because he wants to find the things so dear to you but it gets you to say, I don't choose him no more. You see, we'll line things up in our life. And the pastor got to talking to me and Danielle this week as we was as we was going on to get married, and he said, Danielle, listen, honey. He said, you have to have a certain list in your life. He said, I know you're going to love your husband. He said, I know you love your family. He said, but in God's eyes, your number one priority is God. Your number two priority is your spouse, your husband, or your wife. Your number three is your children. And after that, you can organize it however your heart sees fit. But God said, it's him, it's your wife, and it's your family, amen. And every once in a while, brother, we'll claim to be children of God. Oh, but that list, it'll change. It'll become our wife's number one, our kids are number two, our job's number three, our health's number four, and God will be pushed, pushed down to the list because we forgot the scripture the way the Lord said, come unto me all ye that are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. We're forgetting the scripture how God he healed the sick, made the Hang the walk. We forget the scripture how the Lord fed all the thousands with two fish and five loaves of bread. And we put all these things in front of God. And then when God comes by and we get convicted, we're saying, Lord, why am I getting convicted? And God said, Because I am no longer the one you chose. You chose the world and your family and the things of the world over God. Listen to me, brother. 
If I die tomorrow, my help don't matter to me. Because the Lord said, we're to be absent from the body. It's to be present with the Lord. God said, you'll die one day. And then I'll take this flesh off. And I'll be called with something a little new. God said, I'll be as he is. You can threaten me with death if you want to. But I know where I'm going. When I reach to the other side, I'm ready to go home. You can take my job. You can take my health. You can take my wife. But you ain't going to take God. Why, preacher? Because he's number one. I chose him a long time ago. I like to think sometimes I'm like John was in the womb. You see, when I got out the womb, just like John did, John felt God. He was God's cousin, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. He was Jesus' cousin. Hey, man. I'm sure John still failed. This is a man that baptized Jesus. Hey, man, and this man, I'm sure oftentimes he failed God sis, didn't live up to the expectations of God. I'm sure he had shortcomings. Oh, but when John was in his mother's womb, the Bible said he heard all that Jesus was coming. And as a babe, he left his mother's womb because he just couldn't wait for to see the Son of God. And so and on the inside of me when I think about going or where my father is something on the inside just wants to leave a little bit but because I'm ready to see the father I chose him and I'm going to cleave to him why preacher because the Lord said choose you this day whom you will serve the Lord said you can't have two masters because you'll cleave to the one and hate the other. Or you'll love the one and you'll despise the other. I chose that I'm going to despise Satan. Why? Because I've seen so many friends, so many family members already get dragged in that pit of hell. The, Lord, the Word of God said that hell is enlarging herself. I'm tired of seeing all these who live the, the pleasurous the life of the world and get drugged down into hell and be left here a broken hearted because I know where they're at and I know when I went to that service and heard that man of God preach and say they went to heaven I knew he was dragging hundreds more to hell with them and I want you to understand this you're going to go by the word of God or you're not going to I had a question. We just started a, a youth Bible study at the church. We call it youth Bible study, but adults can come. They can come with the kids if they want to. That's for everybody. And you see, I didn't want to go in and just give them some scripture and talk to them like they was in church or in Sunday school and send them home. I wanted to be able to teach them something they was curious about, they wanted to know. So I told them, I said, kids, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get a box right here. I said, this first one, I'm going to talk to you about some things that youth nowadays have to struggle with, like drinking, drugs, uh, they struggle with premarital sex, they struggle with cussing and talking about people. And I just went through a list, and I had verses of Scripture, and I explained it to them and broke it down. But I told them, I said, while I'm talking to you, I want you to write down some questions you have. I said, the next Bible study, I have, I sat down, I have a study, and got the Scripture for them, and I'm going to answer every one of your questions. And one of the questions got me. Because one of the questions of a modern day Christian. They said the question was, what if someone lives a perfect life for God? Which we can't live a perfect life. But what if someone lives a perfect life for God? And they, and they, and they live the best they can, but they're not a Christian. That was what one of the questions was. And that is the modern day Christian. Because the modern day Christian will forsake the house of God, will forsake the word of God, will forsake the commandments of God, will forsake everything about God, will forsake doing the work for God, but we're a child of God. We'll forsake everything we're supposed to be, but we're a child of God and we claim to be that because we want to make it to the other side. That question was literally just a modern day Christian. And I had an answer. As soon as I read it, I had an answer for that. No man can make it 
by works alone, lest any man should boast. And then you got the other scripture. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Preacher, what's that mean? You can live and donate to charity and be nice and be loving and never say a bad word about somebody and treat your kids right and raise them in a way you should raise them. You can do everything the world says is right and be a, a saint to the world. But God said, unless you a saint of me, you're not of me. God said, the only ones that's going to enter into my kingdom is Galatians 5. God said, if you have these works of iniquity, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because they chose the world and the way the world told them to live rather than choosing Him. The Lord said, I am the way. Straight and narrow. I am the truth, the word He gives us. And I am the life, the everlasting life. Amen. Amen. What if I live a perfect life and I'm not a Christian? And it sounds like to me you ain't found the way yet. Sounds like to me you ain't found the truth yet. And sounds like to me you ain't going to have life much longer. Why? Because this life is of a vapor and a wind. We're here for just a moment. And we'll finish away. The Lord refers to us as grass, flowers and grass. That can just easily be cut down and blown away by the wind. Why? Because to God, our little life span of uh, some, some for us is even short, 20 years. I believe the little fellow was eight years old when I lived in a trailer park in Dallas. Had a heart attack at eight years old, playing out the grandma's front door. To us, eight years old is just. And the Lord said, a thousand years in His eyes twinkle. We're here for just a little while. You want to know the sad part? See us in that little while. We still can't have enough faith to choose Him. We can't have enough faith to say, God, not only did you leave the portals of heaven for me, not only did you forsake everything you ever knew, not only did you come to be born in a manger rather than a throne that you deserved, not only did you work as, as your father's helper, your daddy's helper, Joseph's helper as a carpenter, not only at the age of 12 years old did you go into a temple with grown men and teach them, not only did you get five or hundreds of disciples that turned their back on you except for the twelve, not only did that even twelve turn their back on you, not only did you get beat, get crucified, and die for me, but now I'm not going to give you the, 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 the respect you're due. After all God's done for you, raise your hand if there's been anybody in this world that's done as much for you as God. But you'll give your wife more respect than you will him. You'll give your kids more respect than you will him. God's done more for you. He's, he's done things for you. Nobody else can. Amen. And you still won't choose him. Preacher, how do you know about that? Because I have had time. It's what I haven't chosen. Because it wasn't what I wanted. Who else can say that? Age of 16 year old thinking I know what's best for me. Leaving God, forsaking God. I saw that 15, bro. I thought I preached at 16. I was 15, God was telling me to go into ministry, and I ran. I said, God, you don't know what you're talking about. I can't get in front of people. God, I am, I barely hold a C average in school. If it ain't math, I ain't good at it. And you want me to get behind the pulpit and preach to people that's been in this 40 years? Lord, how can you expect me to do it? Me having to talk to couples that's been married 20 years, trying to help them, give them scripture to help them. I'm thinking, you know more about the Bible than I'm supposed to. Me getting up in a church house with sisters like this, and I've watched shout glory down. And me expecting to give her something to help her. God, I can't do it. So I Pain, suffering, 
sorrow, drunkenness, foolishness, worldliness, lust of the flesh, almost death because I should have died driving that car the way I was driving. And you know, one day God come back around. He'd been there the whole time. But he finally decided to let me hear him again. You know, sometimes he'll tell people, you know, it's time to come back. Come, come on back, please. You see, God had to work me up in a way. Because I was a stubborn piece of cattle. You know, you got them dumb sheep. But they don't want to go back to the fold. Why? Because they're tired of that dog nipping at their legs. And that's how I was. And it took the shepherd doing what the shepherd has to do. You know, if you have a sheep that don't want to stay in the fold, the shepherd will grab that sheep and put it on its leg and break its leg. So it now for the rest of its life walks to the wind. So it understands if I leave this shepherd, I'm going to die. And that's what God did with me. The Lord come down and told me at the age of go, about to be 16 years old, you're going to come back to me now, or you're never going to come back to me again. That's a hard thing to accept at 15, 16 years old. That I'm going to come back to him now or never again. Some adults never get told that. Made my way to an altar. I didn't understand how it was going to help me. But I said, God, if you help me, I'll go where you say go. I'll do what you say do. God, I don't care if I have to go eight hours away. I'll follow you where you lead, when you lead, how you lead. Preacher, how can you still choose God? Because He's never left me the wrong way. Amen. He's never left me down a street I didn't understand. He's never put me in a place and said you're going to have to study in this trouble too long. Even in the times I couldn't walk no more, He would pick me up and take me home. Preacher, how do you still choose God? Because it ain't a choice no more. It's not a choice. I had a choice to marry her. I had a choice to tell her I wanted her for the rest of my life. And with God, it's no longer a choice. Now it's a need. I need Him in my life. I can't live with Him without Him in my life. My bills wouldn't be met. And that's a short thing. My health wouldn't be up, and that's a short thing. You want to know what the most important thing to me is? I wouldn't have that joy that passeth all understanding. I wouldn't have that peace in my heart of knowing. If I die 21 years old, I have a home that's being prepared for me. I wouldn't have a calm assurance of knowing. I can tell my family, if I go before you do, you can see me on the other side. I need him more today than I did yesterday. My mountains are higher and my rivers are wider. I need more than I ever have. And brother, tomorrow, I'm going to need him more than I did today. And the day after, I'm going to need him more than that day. A year from now, I'm going to need him more than I ever have. Why? Because this world's getting worse, and it's getting worse, and it's on its way to hell. And the worse it gets, the more I'm going to need God to intervene in my life. And the more the world beats me down, I'm going to need him to pick me back up. Tell me what other friends you got that can do it better than Jesus. So as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm closing tonight. And y'all know I, I do things different a lot. I no use. Preacher, why? Because I don't know about y'all, but me and my wife's relationship with God can get stronger. God could use us to do more. Preacher, y'all just got married. He can still use us to do more. You see, I talked to y'all last time I preached about a vision I had. Right? How I thought I knew God could use. She don't even know this. We were standing up there today and I was 
I was looking at her as a preacher was seeing the violence in the book. And it was like I had a movie playing in my head. I saw the first time we met. I saw the first time I realized I loved her. I saw the first time that I knew she was the one. I saw the look on her eye, in her eyes when she said she loved me. But then I saw something else. I saw her holding a kid down the road. I saw her being by my side. So I had to go to go do a ministry for God. I saw her being there for me when I was weak, helping me be strong. I saw things down the road that I knew I was going to need her help with. And I said, God, I know what you can do. God, you can use me and her more than you have anyone in this world. And God wants you to. Preacher, why don't you want music? Because we got an awful lot of parents in here. We got an awful lot of married couples in here. And let's, ra let's be honest. Let's raise our hand if we want God to do more with us. Let's raise our hand if we want God to do more with our walk with Him. If we want God to do more with our church. If we want God to revive us and send us to do a mission for Him. I'm done preaching. More chance to come back and say, God, use me. Make me the example for the young kids in the church. Make me the example for my, for my kids. Make me the example for my family members. Make me the example for my wife. Lord, make me the example so when I go out in the world, people's going to say, hey, what church do you go to? Because there's something going on with you and I want to come find out what it is. Amen. We can all come down to the altar tonight and say, God, I choose you. I still choose you. God, I still want you. And God, I want you to do more. I want you to make me the example. Make me the man I need to be. Make me the husband. Make me the wife I need to be. Make me the grandmother or the mother. Make me the grandpa or the grand or the father or the daddy I need to be. Or stick with God and make me the church member I need to be. Because in y'all's situation, y'all would say, God, make me the church member I need to be. I can do what I need to do. Everybody in the church has a job. Some is busy. Some is singing. Some is testifying. Some is sending out a prayer. Calling out. Everybody's got a job. Some of them just simply call the preacher when they see down and say, Preacher, you work. Preacher, I'm praying for you. God, I need you to use me. God, I want you to just please touch me. 